What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here. And now normally on Mondays, you know what we do. We break down a position and we get an outlook of that position. But today we decided to do something a little different. The Madden 20 ratings came out today. And just like me, I'm sure a lot of you are confused. And so this is such a big topic. I knew I couldn't do it alone. I got my boy, Jason, from Another Jacks Podcast. How you doing, bro? What's up, man? You know, nothing better than bringing out a little Madden ratings on a Monday. You know what I'm saying? Madden ratings on a Monday. That's like, that's how you know the football season's creeping up. I felt like when I was younger, you knew football season was close when Madden came out. For sure, man. I mean, I, nowadays, like, it used to be, I'm a little bit older than you. It used to be you would go to like the GameStop at midnight and you would <laughs> get the game at midnight and you and your friends would play all night long. But now you like pre-download it. You buy like the Legacy Edition. It's like it's a totally different game now. Oh yeah, it's totally the ga- the landscape of Madden has changed for sure. And that's a, that's a whole other video with that because I mean now with the Madden Ultimate teams and the online stuff like microtransactions, they're trying to make money off the game from more than just sales. And it's kind of EA is not really a great company. <laughs> no, I mean they get a lot of crap. But what's, what's funny to me is like through all the quantitative data we have about football players, like pro football focus, stats, all these next level analytics, is there something that players care about more than their Madden rating? Like that's legit what they care about the most. Well, you've seen it today. So many different players like went on Twitter and were like, my Madden rating's whack. And there are some people – Especially on the Jags, there's a couple of them that I'm surprised about. We'll, we'll get into that. But what were, did you think uh, from looking at the overall ratings? Did you think that most of them were all skewed, or do you think that there were some fair ones in there? I think there's some fair. I mean, given that our entire team was injured last year, I mean, how do you give someone who was injured the entire year a fair rating for this year? I mean, I can't imagine. Well, I kind of meant just like the players in general. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a tough job, though. I mean, how do you make it a fair game but make everyone happy? I I didn't read something today that like this was the like the lowest like total pool of ratings like. As far as like the scale, like zero to a hundred, like this is the lowest average it's been in a while. Which is shocking because you would think like this league right now is probably like one of the most athletic leagues ever. Like there's so much talent everywhere, but, and it's also part of like the game overall, I guess Madden just is trying to make sure. Cause in the past, if you had like a 71 offensive tackle going up against like JJ Watt, that tackle can basically hold his own. But now like they're trying to make everything seem a little bit more different, a little bit more challenging, I guess. And maybe this game will have a little bit more of like a player development thing to it, yeah. whereas in the past it was like you were locked in at your rating. And there was a little bit of it, but it was like you are pretty much locked in to where you were at when the game started. So maybe this year they'll add a little bit of that to it. All right, so let's dive in to the topic at hand. We're talking Jacksonville Jaguar ratings. Now, the highest rated Jaguar is Jalen Ramsey. At an outstanding 96, and I think he's actually the highest rated corner in the game. Do yeah, I mean, that's, that's fair. I mean, that I'm surprised he's not a little bit higher than that, to be honest. But I guess 96 for a guy who, you know, statistically had one of his, a down year, even though he's really good. But, I mean, that's that sounds about right to me. What about you? Well, that's what I was thinking, too. I thought 96 was fair for him. Because if they were going to give him – because when they were about to announce the last 99, people were like, it's Jalen Ramsey, it's Jalen Ramsey. They were going to give Jalen a freaking 99 overall. They should have done it last year. Yeah, like, that's true. That's when he, he dominated it and he deserved it. Now, when you look at these ratings, anybody in particular stick out to you as being too high? Too high. Hmm. Because that was the one I knew that would be the hardest one because I think yeah. most are fair, but some – there's a couple I think that might be a little bit too high. I mean, is Josh Lambeau too high at 79? Does that count? Should we even be talking about Josh Lambeau? I mean, I, I don't I know. Josh I'm just... Lambeau at a 79 is too low. Okay. okay. I think That's Josh true. Lambeau is one of the league's best kickers, man. And if he wouldn't have had that, like, kind of bad ending to the season last year where he missed, like, a couple back-to-backs and – I mean, granted, they were over 50, but too high? No, I don't think there's anybody on the team that's that's too high. Maybe A.J. Boye's uh, acceleration and agility is a little too high. Like his, I thought that, his, too. 
I thought his that. acceleration and agility is higher than Jalen Ramsey's. I know. I was looking at that overall, <laughs> and I was like, "What do you even? What even is this? Like, are we trying to get him to a ninety-nine? Were you shocked that Telvin Smith was an eighty-eight? Yes. So that's its own topic, and I wanted to kind of get into that as like my main gripe with the entire thing. Yeah. First of all, <laughs> the dude is not an outside linebacker, but he's an outside linebacker in Madden, and it's like. But he barely played outside linebacker. He was mainly like middle linebacker in our in our defense. I know, I mean, Miles Jack and Nickel, but I mean, Telvin Smith did not. I mean, PFF said he played only 40 of his 1,000 plus snaps in 2018 as the outside linebacker. So, I mean, it says he, it says he owns the second highest overall Madden rating with an 88 of outside linebackers. That is so wild to me. And it's like that this year he didn't even. It was his worst year. Like facts. Like this was his worst season, and he's now the and he's not going to play next year. And now the NFL decides to put some respect on his name or EA. I wonder. I wonder if they're going to take him out of the game. Like you know how they like update their live rosters. I wonder if they're going to take him out. I don't think they'll take him out of the game, but I think they'll make it to where the it'll change in the lineup. I think like like he won't be in like as a starter. Do you think you'll be able to use him in like online play? Yeah, probably. You just have to put him in. He's probably be, like fourth in your depth chart. I'd be surprised after their first update if he's not playing week one. I'd be surprised if he's on the on the online roster. Well, dude, I mean, Justin Blackman was on the Jags until like Madden fucking 25 or something like that. Yeah, but they're better now about like a player gets hurt, they like snap him off the roster like instantly. And it's like, it's, it's like gotten to the point where you play with a team and like you're trying to play your buddy and it's like, Everyone's hurt and you can't play with anybody. And it's like, this isn't even fun. And you have to go back to the opening day rosters just to play with the people you want to play with. I know being a Jags fan and playing online was rough last year. <laughs> I mean, and like you pick your choice, pick your choice of Blake Bortles or freaking Cody Kessler online. Like that, that's not a good quarterback to have in Madden. It's not a good quarterback. To 20, have in 2017. It was kind of unfair. Their defense was nasty in that 2017. It was. But now I want to, Oh, you know who else is too high? And I don't know if anyone cares. But Cody Davis? How does Cody Davis still hover around that, like, 72 range? That's fair. 72 is fair for that. He play. He's a special Actually, teams guy. What do you mean? Like, Well, that's probably what they're grading him off of. But, I mean, like, that's a – I mean, if you, I don't know, man. It just you know blows who else my is mind. too high? Who? Taven Bryan. Too high? He's too high. 75? What did he do yeah. last year? He was clueless. <laughs> he, was, he, he had that one play where he, like, turned the wrong way. But he was decent against the run. Dude, uh, was he? Was he, though? Yeah, I, mean, I, think, I think PFF had his, like, run rating, like, I'm, like second or third amongst rookies. I mean, I, I mean I'm, I'm with you. But, I mean. <laughs> I, think, I think, like, and he didn't have a single sack last year or something yeah, like that. he played a lot of the interior. I mean, it's harder for those interior guys to get sacked. But zero? It's not like he didn't play, play a lot. He only played like 200, 300 snaps. I mean, he didn't really have a lot of chances. I felt I, like he was out there more often than I thought he was going to be last year. But I think – because he stood in at a 75, I probably would have put him at like a 73. Okay. That, man, that's fair. But, I mean, maybe they're just thinking – I mean, <laughs> his strength is 93 and his awareness is 59. So, I mean, that pretty much <laughs> sums up Taven Bryan, does it not? I mean, that's a – No, that's fair. If you, if you look at the in-depth ratings, if he has a 59 awareness rating, I will I'll accept that. <laughs> I will accept that for what it is. Uh, what about DJ Hayden, 73? That's a little low. I thought so, too. I'd put him at a 75. I'd put him right in the middle. He did have some, like, injury concerns, though, last year. And, uh, I mean, he's – I mean, like, I think he's good, but, I mean, he was hurt a lot. And, again, it's hard with these guys that are injured that, you know, he, he was too low in my opinion. Another guy that I think was too low is Ronnie Harrison, 71. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I mean, he was he was good last year, but, I mean, he wasn't great. He was better than Tave and Bryant to, to, to give to make your point. I mean, that's true, but yeah, I mean, I, I mean, there's people that I'm more upset about than that. Like Cam Robinson at 69. Okay, that's that's the exact. That was what I like. What with your Telvin Smith situation, that's what I was going to discuss with Cam Robinson. And well, so go ahead. Difficult for like maybe like a three year guy because you know you didn't have that second year 
to show what he can do. But the fact that he was really good his rookie year, really solid. And then he comes in and gets a 69 the next year. You can't – you have to at least give Cam Robinson somewhere in the 70s. I'm not asking for, like, an 80 overall, but, like, 74 at least. What's concerning to me is, like, this offensive line has the potential to be, like, one of the best offensive lines in the league. Yeah. But in, in Madden, your left tackle, Cam Robinson, is 69. <laughs> and Juwan Taylor is 71. So it's like uh, your two tackles are pretty much dog shit. And, you're, and this legitimately could be one of the best offensive lines in the league. They gave Juwan Taylor a higher rating than Cam Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's all we got to say. That's, that's, I mean, what? why wouldn't you flip those guys then in your roster? Like, why wouldn't you flip Juwan to left tackle and put Cam at right, you know? And, you know, for everybody that is out there that's worried about uh, Jared Wilson, you know, Jared Wilson will never leave your mouth. Uh, if you what is he? If you play with him on Madden, your two starting safeties, Ronnie Harrison, he's coming out of 71. Gerard Wilson, 67. Oh, my God. You might as well start Cody Davis. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, I mean what's, why even play? Why, when, you got, when you got the all-star Cody Davis on the roster, why even have Gerard Wilson in the game? Oh, dude, yeah, Cody Davis is higher than Ger- – Dude, is it Gerard Wilson or Jared Wilson? I've heard it I think, both I think it's Gerard. Is it Gerard? I thought like it was Gerard. 70%, sure. I thought it was Gerard, dude. And, like, I heard people say Jared, so I, like, switched it, and then I went back to Gerard. I don't know. I just I – wish, I wish I didn't have to talk about him so much. I went back and forth, and I was like, you know what? I just need to commit to one. And it seemed – he looks like the name was spelled Gerard with two R's, so that's why I went with oh, that. Somebody else that's way too high that I was just scrolling. The one A Smoot. He's a 70. 70's pretty bad, man, though. I know, but, like, you got Cam Robinson at, like, a 69. That, I mean, that's a problem, though. Like, like, he's too low. Like, 70 for Smoot is kind of about right, if you ask me. Like, John Taylor should be about a 75. You, they used to put those early second-round picks in the mid-70s. I'm surprised that they have them so low now. Well, Jawan Taylor, I think, because he was, like, a 71. I think that's what you said, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's fair. I would give Jawan Taylor a 71. That's low, man, for a starting right tackle. Well, I mean, like, if we're looking at this now and we're looking at how Madden's, like, actually doing the ratings and you kind of just step back and kind of look at it, I mean, and it's kind of fair in perspective. I guess so. What about, um, I mean, obviously, with the one we haven't even talked about yet, Nick Foles at 77. That was a good segue. Now, that's what I wanted to talk about here is Nick Foles is a 77. He's coming in at the worst quarterback in the AFC South. He's coming in as the fourth worst starting quarterback in the NFL. Now, here are just some people that are ranked higher than him. Jimmy Garoppolo, Marcus Mariota, Andy Dalton, Matt Stafford, Derek Carr, and Kirk Cousins. All have a higher overall than Nick Foles. What do you think about that? Oh, man. You can almost make an argument for a lot of those guys. But, I mean, Andy Dalton? Yeah, well, Andy like, Dalton, yeah. Kirk Cousins, I mean, all right, the guy's got an arm, right? I mean, he has good receivers last year. So, he, I mean, Kirk Cousins put up over 4,000 yards passing last year. So, I, I, I can understand where he gets that. But the, the Andy Daltons and who was the other guy? Not Garoppolo. Who was the other one? Uh, Stafford, Mariota. Mariota. Yeah. Mariota, man, I will never, ever, ever be a Marcus Mariota guy. Like, I I don't understand, like, it's like they're clinging on to Blake Bortles, like, an extra year. You know what I mean? Like, that's their Blake Bortles, I feel like. They just love him. I mean, maybe it's the fact that his, like, speed is – Mariota's speed is 88 and his acceleration is 90, which is – and his agility is 89. I mean, he's he's fast, so maybe – Maybe, like, as a scrambler, he's good in the game, but, like, as a thrower, maybe they've, like, put more stock into, like, the passing stats, maybe. I'm not sure, but, I mean, Foles is too low at 77. I mean, hands down, just ridiculous. I wasn't really expecting him to be that high because I don't think he was ever outside the 70s the last two Maddens. Yeah, I'm not sure. I never really, like, played with him. 
to be honest. So I think that that's about where like a Nick Foles rating would be, but I do think he should be an 80. So I think next year he's going to, well, he'll show you what he can do as a starter, man. We'll, we'll see. He's definitely a candidate for one of those guys that gets his ratings boosted after like the first couple of weeks of the season, I think, but we'll see. I mean, it, it's, he doesn't really have any receivers here in the national media's eyes. So maybe that went to account. Maybe I, I don't know. That's low. I mean, that's low for a guy that's getting paid $88 million. <laughs> if your if your contract money is more than your Madden rating, there might be a problem <laughs> somewhere. I'm not sure, but uh, maybe. That is the, that's the biggest problem. And speaking <laughs> of contracts, the man who has not been paid yet, Yannick mm. Ngakwe, 84. I know that upsets a lot of people, and I don't want people to get the wrong idea that I'm not a big Yannick Ngakwe fan, but I'm not as big on him as most people are. And I know people hate me for this, and I get it. I'm not trying to be just a dissenter, but the guy was pretty bad against the run. I mean, our team gave up a lot of rushing yards, and a lot of that goes on to the front seven. And if you're telling me a team with Calais Campbell, who's great against the run, and a team with Miles Jack, who's great against the run, there's got to be a weak link somewhere. So I understand that Ngakwe's speed rushing is – it's probably – I haven't looked at the ratings. It's probably really high. But as far as, like, his tackling and his, his ability to shed blocks, I mean, he's never really shown he's elite at that is the only issue I have with him. But how often do you get a good – pass rushing DN not very often so I understand the urgency to pay him but may, I think everyone should maybe be a little cautiously optimistic on the type of contract that he gets but I know I'm in the minority with that so what would you off the Madden record what would you assume to be a fair contract for Yannick and Gokwe? not you don't need to give like specific numbers yeah. but like are we paying him like Top tier edge rusher, like mid tier, you know, low tier, higher mid tier. What are you thinking? Well, I mean, a lot of people point like his sack numbers to why he should be a top tier paid guy. And I get that because everybody wants sacks, but uh, there's a lot more that goes into it than sacks, right? That's like grading defensive backs just off of interceptions. Like, I know it's a big part of it, but in reality, like, some of it's luck, like, as far as interceptions go. The same with sacks. And I, I think he should get paid at the bottom of the top tier, but I know that's not how contracts work. Contracts work like you get paid more than the last person. And I'm all for people getting their money, but in a league with a salary cap and a team like us, I wonder how much of Josh Allen's production this year will eat into Ngakwe's contract. I just wonder. Like uh, It's just like something I've been thinking about. Well, do you think he's going to hold out throughout training camp? And he's going to – if we don't give him a contract, and then is he going to be like one of those guys that's going to demand a trade? Because, you know, like guys like Melvin Gordon are doing that like as recently as yesterday. Yeah, I, that's, I mean, that's a good point. I mean, Melvin Gordon definitely – like when you saw it happen with Le'Veon Bell, you kind of were like, all right, this might be like a one-person thing. We haven't seen it yet move into the, the, like the premier positions like the end or quarterback and things like that. So, and then Gakwe doesn't strike me as the type of guy that would do that. But maybe he feels the pressure of the Josh Allen pick, and maybe he sees his stats decline. Maybe he sees an aging Calais Campbell. Maybe he sees the, the back four declining in play, and he's getting a little nervous, and his agent is suggesting him to hold out. Only, only time will tell. But I think it's interesting because I've always been a – Optim like a like a be cautious person with cautiously optimistic with Ngakwe and and I think it's interesting that how his Madden grade was a lot lower. Now I understand what you're saying, and all of that stuff does go into mostly the contract, but I, I don't think the Madden community and the Madden ratings people were thinking about that when giving Yan an 84. I think that that was more of a lack of knowledge of who Yannick Ngakwe is. Yeah, maybe. Um, I was watching. Uh, thing on twitter earlier today is like keenan allen's response to twitter i don't know if you saw it but he said he refuses to play the game and he's like an 89 overall it's like it seems kind of like generous to me for that to be Keenan allen yeah yeah Yeah. but he was all mad but it it 
it talks about how like his deep route running was like 75 and like that's what he's known for so i think you're right some of these like smaller market teams these these guys just really i mean it would take a long time to do the due diligence to research everything and but d end on the jags who were pretty bad last year giving him a 84 can we really be that upset about it i don't think so i would personally if i was giving out ratings i would have gave out a 87 to Yannick Ngakwe. Yeah, I would too. I would say 86, but I know we're splitting hairs there by one point. But, yeah, I think you're about right with that. Now, we talked about Nick Foles. We talked about all these ratings. Now, let's kind of discuss the team overall rating. Mm. We come in here at a 79. Mm. Now, I mean – we had an off year last year, that no doubt about that. Like, I mean, if this game is supposed to be based off of what we did last year, I think 79 is a little bit generous. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, from the crappy play we've had that year. And I don't know, the free agents we added didn't necessarily do anything to help our Madden overall rating, but maybe the team overall. What do you think? 79, too high, too low, just right? I think it's too low because the team was injury riddled last year and all those guys are back now healthy. So the team probably deserves an 89 rating based off of their performance last year, but half of the team that's on the Madden roster didn't play last year. So it's like, I mean, I would like to see like an 82. I think that would have been fair just based off the defense alone. I mean, the defense got an 82 rating overall. Which is not, it's not as good. I mean, we're better than that. I mean, yeah, I mean, our safeties are terrible. And yeah, our, our linebacker, our Jake Ryan. And, and, you know, but I mean, besides that, it's like we have some like perennial all pros on our D line. And comes, in our comes second. down to, I think, like them not watching football. I don't think people yeah. like at EA watch football. Well, they probably just watch like the, the games that are on primetime. So they watch the Steelers and the Eagles every week. And so I think that's why the Eagles have the highest rating and the team rating in the game when they weren't even in the Super Bowl last year. Does that make any sense to anybody? Like, I don't know. But The ratings are so inconsistent. One other one that I want to touch on is that if the reason they gave Cam Robinson a 69 is because, yeah, sure, he had a good first year but he had this season-ending injury, so we're going to give him a 69. Marquise Lee has an 80. I do not think Marquise Lee deserved an 80. I'd put him at a 76. That's what I would put him at. I mean, he's at 80 when healthy, but I don't think he's going to get back to his healthy form until at least midway through the season. So, yeah. I mean, I you know, it is it is what it is. I I I like to play Madden, so... I also know they update the ratings. So I think this was just like they put something out there to put something out there to have people talking about it before they release the game. And then once they release the game, they'll kind of dig into who's playing what and how they're performing, and they'll kind of you know, update the ratings from there, in, in my opinion. Because remember in 2017, the Jags started pretty bad, and then by the end of the year, they were like the best team in the game. So I think you could see a little bit of mobility in the Jaguars – rankings for sure i think so too now one more player that i want to talk about because i just was i was scrolling for one last look to see if there's any other individual players i wanted to talk about and i want to say keelan cole 77 i think that is insanely generous <laughs> <laughs> well i you know me i'm a keelan cole believer like, I, I, I promise you, I do not have these takes just to be in the minority. I, I, I get what it sounds like. But I'm, I am. I'm a Keelan Cole believer. I mean, he has big play potential. He, 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 his yards per reception were the highest on the team in 2017. He made that miraculous one-handed catch in the Patriots game. He flashes things like that that make you think that he can kind of get there. But you, I, I'm hesitant to – evaluate any player on last year's team for what they are because of how bad everybody was like 
Blake Bell played tight end. Like, come on. Blake Bell is your blocking tight end. How are you going to evaluate Fournette when Blake Bell is your blocking tight end? Patrick Omame is your left guard. How are you going to evaluate Blake Bortles when Eric Flowers and Patrick Omame are your left side blocking? Like, I don't know. I get a little hung up on that fact alone. So I'm, I'm hesitant to, to evaluate Keelan Cole off of how he played last year because I think he has potential to get back to his 2017 form next year. Yeah, I don't know about freaking uh, – so I had a problem with my mic there. I had to freaking shuffle it around. I was busy. So I tried but, to stall a little bit about Keelan Cole. I did, yeah, did the best no, I, I could. I appreciate that. That's, that's, that's a good look for a uh, podcast partner. He looked. He's like, oh, this boy's struggling. I was going to – I, I got to tell you, last week on the podcast, uh, we were like four or five minutes into the podcast, right? And I had my drink that I usually have during the podcast because that's how I get through them, right? And – I like knock over my drink all onto my laptop and we're like live. It's like live on YouTube. It's like, and where I'm just like, so I just get up. I like grab a towel and like I dry off my laptop and Joey's just sitting there just cranking out about Leonard Fournette for like 10 minutes and I get back. I'm like, dang, Joey, you've really progressed as a podcaster. How you can knock out 10 minutes of dead space. Dude, that's beautiful. what I was thinking because the whole time I was like, I was sitting here and I was listening to you talk and I like, I pulled out my cord and I'm like, holy shit, I'm not even plugged into this fucking thing. And freaking Jason podcast pro comes in here, takes it by the balls. I've had to do that with my friends a couple of times. <laughs> that's the mark of a uh, experienced uh, podcaster right there. It really is. You know, two of the, uh, two of the greatest to ever do it. I'd say right here on this podcast. Yeah, I would agree with you there. I mean, freaking! it's almost like we should start a podcast or a channel or something. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. We just got to think of it like a catchy name, you know, like uh, like two dudes in a hat podcast. Two, two, I, w- I was giving him I was giving him <laughs> shit right when he came into the, the podcast because he's wearing his hat exactly how I usually wear my hats. But today I had I had it on forward today. Uh, hey, I like the Nixon. You know, I'm wearing the Nixon right now. So, you know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm loyal to my brands for sure. <laughs> what are your brands? Uh, Nixon, I got Ruka, a big Nike guy, even though they're like, you know, weird about the American flag. I get it. People hate them, but whatever. And then, uh, I wear Jag stuff pretty much all the time. What is the Nike boycott like in Florida? Are people up in arms about that there? Well, we have a big, like, uh, conservative, uh, group of people here. So there's, there's a lot of elderly people here in Florida and they're mostly conservatives and they don't like, they love Trump and basically anything Trump says they do. And, um, that's one way to do it. You know, I I don't talk bad about anybody. So if that's what you want to do, then, but yeah, there's a lot of it. There definitely is a lot of it. I was very curious because Idaho is very, very much the same. They say it's the most Southern Northern state in America. I I can see that. It's a, it's a lot of yeehaw down here in Idaho. Really? Yeah. It's funny you say down here in Idaho because when I think of Idaho, I think of like Canada. Well, yeah, I don't know why I said down there. I, you know what's funny is I always, I always give my friends shit about that. My friend will be like, oh, we're going down to freaking Spokane. I'm like, you mean up? And then here I am just doing it to myself. The exact same thing, yeah. All right, any uh, last words you want to add about the, the Madding Ratings before we get out of here? I'm kind of pissed that the Houston Texans have a higher defensive grade than we do. I, mean, I didn't even know that. That's a yeah. whole other topic right there, dude. Yeah, they're in 88 and we're in 82 defensively. I wonder, did you happen to look at what Tashawn Gibson's overall rating was? Um, I did not. I didn't. I did look up the defensive stats, and I did see that the Texans gave up um, nearly 500 more yards than we did last year, but somehow they're ranked higher defensively and, and how they gave up 0.3 yards more per play than we did, yet they're still ranked higher, so – a little interesting how that happened, but, you know. Houston's a little interesting to me because on paper they could either be really good this year or really average. It depends on Deshaun Watson because I've never been a big Deshaun Watson guy. Yeah. Well, I mean, like I told you I went on that Houston Texans podcast, and they're real optimistic. They're thinking they're going to win the division. Like, they're all scared of the Colts, but they, they're all pretty pretty high on their horse there, and – and I, I told him, I was like, look, man, y'all got to figure out that offensive line. If you can't figure out the O-line, then that, nothing matters. It doesn't matter if you have nuke. doesn't matter 
D hop doesn't matter. It's like without an offensive line, nothing can happen. Speaking of D hop, did he deserve that 99 or no? Yeah, I'm a big Hopkins fan. I really I am. am. Too. I, I was gonna be. It was gonna be a really <laughs> bag back and forth if you're gonna say no. Yeah, no. I mean, anytime like Jalen Ramsey gives you credit, then that I, that's good enough for me. That's yeah, all, that's all I need to hear. <laughs> it's a stamp of approval, dude. The, yeah, you need the Jalen stamp of approval. That or the Cody Davis stamp of approval. Either one. They both oh. pretty much. They both pretty much weigh the same to me. So you know, if you can get one, then. I think if this podcast taught you anything, it is that Cody Davis is an elite member of the Jaguars secondary. Maybe we should name it the Cody Davis podcast because uh, Cody Davis, Toby, just as we should just name our podcast episodes instead of numbering them. We should just name it after like irrelevant Jaguar players <laughs> <laughs> that like no one remembers. Like this is episode Uchi Nawari. <laughs> <laughs> they had uh who was the they had vince manawai I, I was on the jags all 25 i, I like, forgot about that guy it's like <laughs> he's a top 25 i forgot all about him but I, I good i'm glad that i guess he was good so stay tuned tuesday treb has his own top 25 job wars of all time oh, list my goodness. and can we it us, starts can you give us like a hint of like maybe who's higher than you think maybe or who's lower than you think um I think if you are more of an old school Jaguar fan, I think you won't like my ratings because I think I have a little bit more of the I could have guessed that current landscape because you probably didn't watch a lot of the old school Jags. So I could I started watching the Jags in '07. Hmm. So you know, and that's that's like me basing off of like I like knowing that the Jags had only crappy seasons when I watched them. That's true. I mean, if you can stick through that little block of years then you've probably qualified yourself because those were the toughest times to be a Jags fan for sure and that's why I weigh 2017 so heavy 2017 was like the year that it was cool for me to say I was a Jags fan around people yeah and yeah. I'll, I'll go ahead I've never been so up and so down so quickly from 17 to 18 but that's that's how life goes man you learn that the hard way did you shed any tears after the Miles Jack wasn't down game. Um, I didn't cry, but I was like in a really bad mood for like a week. And like people at work were like not didn't like talk to me, and like they didn't like like people that normally ask me to do things at work like didn't ask me to do things because they knew I was a little more snappy, admittedly. But I also admittedly I put down a a nice chunk of change at the beginning of the season on the Jags winning the Super Bowl, and so I was pretty upset. I was set to win some pretty heavy cash and. Uh, you were so close. close. I was just close. Oh, my God. And I also want to say that there is a Jaguar player on here that is right on the tippy top of the list that everybody will dislike the video right away and will oh. agree with it. Nothing like telling people they're going to dislike the video before you put it out. That's, always a, that's always a good strategy. I've heard that that is the best way to do it. It's a hot, fiery <laughs> take that you guys will have to stay tuned to on Tuesday. Hey, guys, you're going to hate this video, but make sure you watch it. <laughs> you know, that's, that's the, bold, tree. That's I'm bold. Prepare myself. I'm preparing myself. <laughs> All righty, guys, that was going over the Jaguars Madden ratings and a little more tagged on at the end. If you guys haven't already, you can hit that subscribe button, click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. And nobody at work with me, those are just straight facts. Jason, go ahead. You know where to find Hey, man, you know how to find us. We're another Jags podcast. We're, uh, we're out there, you know. We're just doing our thing. It's yeah. all about Treeb today, baby. It's all about Treeb. You got y'all wait until the uh, the Cody Davis podcast takes over the freaking the whole community. I can't wait. I'm I'm gonna hit Cody up see if he wants to come on our podcast. We'll that would soon. that would be the best because it would turn into a meme after a while and we'd get like up there and then Cody Davis actually gets on there and then get like a hundred thousand views. Yeah, maybe his Madden rating will go up. Who knows? <laughs> Alrighty, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.